Matt Curley from LearnCigarBoxGuitar.com um, looking at um, how to play some country blues, old style country blues on a four string cigar box guitar. Now I'm tuned here to the key of G, so that's G, D, G, B, that's the one, five, one, three tuning, that's quite common amongst the four string players. Um, and it works fine for this sort of style. It's a variation of the old Spanish uh, six string tuning. So what I want to do is look at some of the common ideas and common techniques and approaches that were used uh, back in the day to play this old style and see if we can translate it onto, onto this four string guitar without making it too complex. There will be some complexity. I won't have to talk about scales and scale degrees and the rest, but um, um, also just show you the shapes and and have a listen to various basic patterns uh, and how they work. So, first of all, we have our open G chord there on the open fret. I'll just um, zoom down into the guitar maybe for now so it's a little bit easier to, to see what's going on. You don't need my right hand so much in this one. So I'll just stick to my left hand there. That's pretty good. You'll be able to see that. Um, Right, so you've got your open G chord, C chord on the 5th fret, D chord on the 7th fret. Sometimes called the 1 chord, the 4 chord or the 5 chord. Okay. So you've also got that you've probably seen before this old style. Shuffling from the open on the, set, the third string up to the second fret on the uh, that same string on the third string, so we'll take advantage of that because that's cool. We know that we can do the same thing on our other chords by barring across that fifth fret or seventh fret and shuffling up two frets to the next note, the sixth note in each chord. Okay, your rhythm is going to be that tum ta tum ta tum ta tum the shuffle groove, um, which allows us to play triplets, da 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 Which leads me on to the next bit I wanted to show you about, right? So you've probably already seen all that stuff. What you may not be so familiar with is using uh, arpeggios and um, particularly to um, draw out this minor major conflict in the blues, which is what really what this one's all about. Arpeggios and um, double stops. So an arpeggio is when you play all uh, the notes of the chord, one after the other, rather than just playing the chord. So if you look at a G7 chord in this position here, Uh, first finger on the third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret. You've got the first note of the chord, the G there on the fifth fret, the third note of the chord, and the fifth note of the chord. So one, three, and five are the three notes that make up the chord. You've also, if you put your little finger down here on the sixth fret on the top string, that's the seventh note of the chord. All right, so if I play those notes one after the other, I've got it. Dominant seventh arpeggio. I'm, I'll use the names just because they're names, and I've got to call it something. <laughs> it's a seventh chord where I play the notes one after the other. Okay. That needs to be. You need to be really familiar with that particular little shape, and also how to use it. Okay. The other thing you need to know is that that five chord there. You can also play it five note. Sorry, there the, the D note. On the third fret and top string, you can also play that D note here on the seventh fret on the second string. So that note and that note are the same. And that gets around the problem of um, what to do with the seventh note if you want to play it with the five. You can't play those two together, so you can do that. And that, when you're in that shuffle, da dum, da dum, da dum, da dum, da, when you play one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. One, two, three Sound like Robert Johnson. <laughs> okay, now I'm going 
Um, I'll just show you my right hand for a bit. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. You can equally go one, two, three, one, two, three. Where you repeat uh, first finger on the second, second finger on the top string. Entirely up to you. But that's that's uh, a new space you want to be aware of, right? So have a go, have a go at this. Yeah, practice that, play that a lot, um, and that sounds cool. You can even if that's all you get out of this lesson, you've got something pretty good because you can do a lot of blues with that. Yeah, but there's more. <laughs> there's more. Okay, uh, so we said that was the fifth note of the scale, right? An important uh, thing in the blues is how the major and the minor uh, tonalities uh, interfere with each other, if you like. The major. Sounds like that, sort of a happy sound. The minor sounds like that, more of a sad sound. That's the major pentatonic was used in gospel music. The minor in the blues. So it's like the devil, there's the devil. Fighting against our angels, you know, which is what the blues is, isn't it? So that little uh, sort of interaction between the minor and the major third whether you do it like that or that's that's your blues right there yeah so you want to do a lot of that yeah so if you look at that little intro I played it's yeah I just played that uh, five and seven that little favorite little triangle there almost a triangle back to my chord but instead of just playing the G I hammered up from the minor onto the major third and then that took me up to the five chord yeah, there's your turnaround and you can use that obviously all over the place please do it's fun yeah. so that's another thing you need to be aware of. Um, you, you'll use that little lick a lot. Okay, there's the five there as well. There. Um, where's another one? Notice how I, I like to end on the first note there. Notice when I end on that note there, which is the seventh note in the in the in the chord. Um, that one. It does that has that same sort of tension in it. So if you want to end your end your phrase there, you do that. Um, but the main thing here is looking at um, some little motifs and little little ideas that you can throw into a typical country blues thing. Yeah. So um, the other one that's important is chromatic movement or sliding from one note to the note next to it and a great way to do that is from the note just below the five note there on the sixth fret on the top string up to the five that's called a flat five because it's one flat from the five it's um, a nasty one so nasty that you really need to do that so in the same way you can go Then you've got your minor pentatonic scale or your blue scale, which is where that one comes from. All right, I'll just run through that blue scale. So on the second string, it's open, third, fifth, sixth, seventh, tenth, twelfth. So you can use all those notes. 
and on the top string, if we train, if we play the rest of the scale on the top string, it's one, three, and then the first fret, third fret, sixth fret, uh, what's that? Eighth fret to play the one note. You can also go up to the eleventh fret to play the flat third minor. Okay, a lot of information here. Rewind the video, take notes. <laughs> um, you may not want to use the scales. Right? I'm, just, I'm just presenting them there for those people that do want to use them. But um, the main thing really is these little motifs, these little little licks and ideas that are typical in the country blues. So that are based around a chord. Now the cool thing when you get to the C chord is that that minor note, that's the big strong evil bluesy minor note, is now a really important chord in this um, seventh in this C chord. Right? There's a C chord there. If I take that note, which is the first note in the chord, back to there, it becomes the seventh note in that chord. So it's an important note there. So I can always play that when I get to the C chord, for example. back to the four chord to the C chord and then up to the major third on the fourth fret there when it's back to the one chord mm. again a lot of information here that's another important thing to be aware of yeah so let's rewind a little bit shall we We've got our double stops that we can connect little elements with. We've got the minor major third. We've got the blues scale flat five. extensive use of the minor chord on the C, the minor third on the C. Right. So a few examples just to end up with, shall we? So um, let's see from that little rave I played before, there's... Thing that's really cool to do is if you can is get these little semitone one fret movements to tell us what the chord change is right so hopefully you heard that then right so what was that that was just that little pattern here the little one to the five that you're familiar with and I just finished it off by going to the, sorry five to the seven five to the seven that I finished it off by going to the one with referring to the names of the notes because when I say one it makes sense when you hear it right that's the one it's it's where the chord is right it's where you resolve to it's the that's the tonic of the key if I was to say the ninth fret it doesn't really give you any information at all right? now I've got a video on naming the notes if you want to go to that um, but I'm going to persist with using the proper names for these things, even though sometimes people complain. Anyway, uh, five, seven, one. Slide up to the five. Slide back to the four there. Remember to listen and resolve back to the one note or to a note that you want to resolve to. It doesn't have to be the one. Sometimes you can resolve to the nine, which sounds sort of cool. Let's see if I can do that. Yeah. 
all sorts of things you can do. Um, if it sounds good, it's good. It's the bottom line, isn't it? Um, but for now, it's, it is handy to have a little bit of a framework. And if you can make this arpeggio here, your framework, which includes that, those couple of notes there as well. Well, just um, have a look and get those shapes, listen for them. Write them down, take some notes, watch the video over and over again. Um, put in a bit of effort on this, is really what's required. And um, you'll start to make some progress. Yeah? Cheers.